I would like to yield, Mr. Speaker, to a good friend of mine from Georgia. Sir? Thank you. And I'll tell you, the key to this is open and honest debate. And, and we hear a lot from the President from Democrats today about America's millionaires not paying their fair share. And, and they quite honestly quote Warren Buffett and talk about the Buffett rule. And, and certainly, I'm, I'm happy Mr. Buffett lives in a country like I do where he's uh, able to achieve what he was. But Warren Buffett is a billionaire, not a millionaire. Now, let's talk about you know, who America's millionaires are. In my part of the country, farmland sells for about $3,500 an acre. So if you own 285 acres of land that you farm, you're a millionaire. In other parts of the country, it may sell for as much as $15,000 an acre. And if you're a farm family with 66 acres, that's one of America's millionaires. These are hardworking, middle-income middle Americans who've saved all their lives to pay for the farm. We need to work to protect these family farms so that the next generation can carry on their legacy. We hear a lot about that, protecting the American farmer from the other side of the aisle, yet they propose tax policies that do the exact opposite and very much would destroy our agricultural industry and the safety net that it provides in this country. In fact, if you follow their tax policy, America's farmers will simply be another statistic. What statistic? As it stands today, approximately 30% of family businesses will be passed on to the family second generation, only in America. 12% will make it to the third generation, and only 3% of all family businesses make it to the fourth generation or beyond. For a family farmer, for a small business owner, that's very disheartening. However, if the president has his way, those percentages will be even lower. On January 1st, 2013, the death tax will rise from the dead again, reordained by President Obama and returned with a rate of as much as 55%. Again, in my part of the country, a middle-income family farmer in my part of the country who owns more than 285 acres of land could be assessed a death tax of as much as 55% of what they try to leave to the next generation. That's what the President defines as the family farmer's fair share. Mr. Speaker, family farms are a significant reliable food source for our country and the world, and they play a vital role, a vital role in our nation's national security. However, under the President's death tax proposal, family farmers would be forced to downsize their operations, chunk by chunk, selling their assets to pay for what amounts to nothing other than the seizure of the family farm. Many may shut down and have to sell everything just to cover the cost. I think of the song by Crosby, Stills and Nash that said, tax the rich to feed the poor till there are no rich no more. This is certainly the attitude of the current administration. And the truth is, you simply can't feed the hungry without the family farmer. They play a vital role in everything we are and do as Americans. Mr. Speaker, you want more hungry people in America? You want a decline in family businesses and higher unemployment? Follow the President's proposal on the death tax because that's exactly where it leads. It's the seizure of assets of the family farmers and the family businesses in America. And I promise you, if that happens, there will be more hungry people in America. Well, I so appreciate uh, my colleague from Georgia, the president of the freshman class, Mr. Scott, for his comments on the family farm and standing up for family farmers all across America.